Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, I'm Alex. This is the Ramble. That's the city below us, New York City. And we'll be here till midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, Lake Oswego. Every two weeks we drop out there, or we drop in there, or we go there and find out what's <laughs> happening to the wonderful world of Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Good morning. How are you? Uh, the, in case people, this is the first time you've ever joined us. The reason her last name is Bennett is pure coincidence. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> actually, she married me at one point, and then she she didn't want to get rid of the name. So, you know. You know, if we hadn't gotten divorced, we would have been married, can it possibly be 65 years? Oh, boy. I'm not sure I can't do the math that quickly. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, at least maybe we would have had kids and then we would have had somebody to take care of us. You know. Don't, don't you remember a discussion we once had when we were living in Riverdale in that apartment? Mm -hmm. about That's in New was, York City, folks. Go ahead. And we it was referencing the cats that we thought it was only a half serious conversation or maybe half funny, mm -hmm. but we weren't going to have children because it was so much more work with the cats you just put the food and the water down on the floor and walk right, away right <laughs> right they clean themselves right they take care of everything <laughs> you know. and if you get enough of them like we did they just ignore you <laughs> right, <yes. laughs> when we broke up you left me with five cats no four really where did the fifth one come from Hmm. Hmm. Well, anyway, enough cats. Yes. Uh, that it, they, they literally took over the house. I mean, they ran the house. I, I, I had no say-so in the matter. I, that wasn't... I mean, that happened after I was gone? Well, it, when you were there, you ruled the house, and I had no say-so in the matter. So, <laughs> oh, so there wasn't it's much difference. There wasn't much you, difference. Yeah, but... Uh, you know. Yeah. Do you still remember the name of all the cats? Yavis, Yavis and Shadif. <laughs> Shavis and Yadif. And, um, no. Bert and Charlie. Oh, right. Charlie was a great cat. Charlie was the best cat, the smartest cat I ever had. I mean, bar none. Just amazing. And I would sit there watching television, and he would come up on the bed and sit on the pillow next to me with his paw around my uh, around sweet. my shoulder like so hey, hey pal yeah. yeah i really miss having a cat i'd spent two years and i really really miss him well i i miss having a cat but then i figure at my age he's gonna live longer than me and i uh, you know i don't i don't want something looking at me going you're gonna be gone but i'm still gonna be here i just uh, oh, yeah. you know i thought about it and i had a friend and Listen to this, a friend in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and I know through the blog, and we'd been talking and I talked about at me really missing having a cat and the cat that she had, she had had recently died. And I got a note from her after our conversation saying for because, you know, I'm old and I'm sick, that it wouldn't be fair to get a cat and who was going to take it and, you know, and you'd feel bad about all that. She said she would drive up from San Francisco and get it. Is that an offer or what? <laughs> that, that, that is an offer, of course. Yeah. And, and that cat, I, I got to say something. I, I love you, and I will love any cat that you have. However, that cat was not the most friendly cat I've ever had to deal with. Because you oh, left, left him with him me. I left him with you to stay, to, when I had to go away, to stay with you that time, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, he was a little diffident. We could put it maybe that way, standoffish. That's putting it mildly. Yeah. What the cat would do, what the cat would do was 
would never come over and have anything to do with me unless I was doing some work at the computer. <laughs> and then he was all he was all over my legs and you know everything else. And then the minute because I you started, were you were looking at something else other than him. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's a cat trait, not just him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you. Well, Shabbos, which was our my my favorite cat I ever had because I loved him. He was so zen, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and she loves Shabbos as well. He was a terrific cat. You know, and he he didn't demand attention, although he would sit on top of the television set, and we couldn't figure out whether cats sat on top. This was the old days, not with the flat screens, but with the actual television sets. We couldn't figure out if they sat on top of the television set because that's where everybody was staring, or it if, was also warm. Or also that it was warm. Yeah. yeah. So. And their and their tail then would hang down. Oh yeah, well it was like a like a window washer, you know, back yeah. and forth in front of the screen. Yeah. And I have to get up and move the cat, so we could watch <laughs> television. People don't remember those days, but they today a cat couldn't sit on top of a television screen. No, pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but I wonder if one cat says to another cat, "When I was a kitten." <laughs> Funny. We had yeah. television sets we could sit on. And they were warm. And they were warm. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, so um you even you've been just feeling yeah. oh, it's been a hard week. I had a meltdown on Monday. Um because you know, I'm in hospice now. Did we talk about that? No, but you don't look like it. Well, that's People think you go in hospice two days before you die. That's not the time to do it. It's time to do it long before that. Mm -hmm. What it does, the difference between palliative care and hospice care is that with palliative care, although they take care of you in terms of comfort, mm -hmm. you can also be treated in a way that might cure or mm -hmm. cure a disease or prolong your life. Mm -hmm. You stop all that when you go into hospice and it's all comfort care. And I have the most amazing team. But this week, my God, they all came. I've got more. Another one coming tomorrow, um, Thursday. But yesterday was just I, the, 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 I have a nurse, an RN, who is also my case manager. I have a social worker. I have an aide for when I need personal care help, mm -hmm. which I don't yet. But if I live long enough, I probably will. Mm -hmm. Um a social worker, um, and there's somebody else I'm leaving out. <laughs> and, and yesterday, three of them came, and I'm, I, you know, I live alone. Because of the pandemic, you know, we none of us have very many guests or anything, or go out much. And I was exhausted yesterday, just exhausted. Really? I well, I was one after another. Plus. There were a couple of deliveries and one of the was a pickup with some equipment. And I thought, well, how long does that take? Do you get the equipment and walk out of the house? Well, there was paperwork and there was something else and something else. And it took 15 or 20 minutes. And it was just by the time the last person left in the afternoon, I was I was so wiped out. I got into bed at 430. Mm -hmm. So, so, so in, in other words, you're not in a hospice. You are in no hospice. hospice is mostly done at home these days. Oh really? Okay. There are there's hospice also in hospitals, nursing homes, um, in uh, and in freestanding hospices. Um, did you lose me? No, I'm listening to you. Okay, uh, and and but most commonly at home. And they, you know, when the first nurse came two weeks ago to do all of the orientation she was here for four hours but when we were just setting up the appointment <clears throat> i assumed that i would have to go to their offices for all of this stuff we had to go through i mm don't -hmm. know from now on we always come to you i mean, that's just wonderful that's just wonderful because my energy has disappeared so much of my energy has disappeared mm -hmm. a very big thing even for me to drive sometimes the short distance to the grocery store. Yeah. And and it's just, and especially to drive somewhere I haven't been before mm -hmm. and don't know the way and don't know what can go wrong. I'm just not very good at that anymore. 
than I was when I, you know, a few years ago. So, so I'm very grateful. And then I had a problem with a prescription um, that I wrote about for Wednesday's Today, Wednesday's Post. And the nurse who'd been here when we had the problem <clears throat> later that day on her own time, she went home and spent two hours making phone calls and getting through all the bureaucracy and all the long times on hold that you go through and that sort of thing. And called. she called me in the evening and said, you should know within three days if you have been accepted for an extension of this discount for a certain drug that I can't afford without the discount. And, um, and the next morning, Tuesday morning, nine o'clock, I, it was a robot call. It wasn't a real person, but I identified the company and said that the extension for my discount on, on the drug had been approved. Yeah. And I just, you know, I just lost it on Monday when she and I kept running into just intransigent people. One person who said, no, 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 that didn't happen that way last year. Yes, it did. I was there. I, you know, I know what happened. And she said, no, it doesn't happen that way. And she said that two or three times. And, you know, you kind of get crazy in the head when somebody tells you that your red sweater is green. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, I mean, it's like living with Trump every day in your life. You know? you know You know what I was thinking? God bless these people who work hospice. Because oh, and, and all of the medical workers. All of them. Yeah. They're different from you and me. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, because it really is pretty terrific what they do. It's amazing. And that's what I mean about, you know, most of us choose some other kind of life. Nobody ever got rich working for hospice or a hospital, you know, or being a doctor or a nurse. Nobody ever, well, maybe the surgeons, but, you mm. know, um, nobody really gets rich in that. You do those kinds of work because you want to help people who can't help themselves. Yeah. And and think about now all the people that are in all of that enormous PPE in hospitals treating the people with the virus. Yeah. They get up. I, I think about this often. They get up in the morning and you yawn and you stretch. Okay, I got to get ready for work. And they're, oh, maybe I'll get the virus today. I've got to be careful. And you go through your morning routine and you still go to work every day and wrap yourself up in all that PPE and go there with all those infectious people because you believe in taking care of them and they can't take care of when they can't take care of themselves. Yeah, but, you know, I was thinking about the hospice people. <clears throat> I mean, really, most when they when they're doing hospice for somebody, they know that person's life is. Fading away. Fading away. <laughs> yes. And that they're at some point, no matter how much they get to know this person, are going to have to deal with them passing. Mm -hmm. um, that's got to be a difficult thing on them. You know, I. So while I ask people like that about that, exactly your mm -hmm. question, and <clears throat> they give varying answers about, but I got to know that person and I like that person, you know. They, they never told me they disliked somebody. They, there must be ones they dislike, well, but they do their work anyway. I would wonder how much they involve themselves in people like yourself, knowing that their time here is limited and that if they get too emotionally involved, okay, with that person, that they're going to well, have to go through grief. I think they just do it and they do go through the grief. Bless them the other day yesterday i think it was tuesday um after that approval had come in later in the in the early afternoon my nurse who's my case manager came by and it was just she was in the neighborhood and she'd done this wonderful thing for me mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me wanted to come by and we ended up do we just talked for an hour and got to know each other but we've only seen each other twice before briefly and got to know each other better and had a wonderful time talking. Um, and, oh, I must tell you something. She was born and raised in South Korea. Mm -hmm. And and she's, she speaks English with about this much of an accent, hardly any accent at all. Mm -hmm. 
and she came here in her teen years or going like going on college years, I think. And I asked her how she learned English because she speaks English to me, except for this teeny, teeny, tiny accent, um, like a native. And she said, this is the most wonderful thing. She and her, she grew up in her family that they all together every week watched Dallas. And that's how she learned English. <laughs> and she said when she first came here, she thought that all Americans had big sprawling ranch houses and she thought that women and housewives did the dishes and, and cooked the dinner and everything in dresses and high-heeled shoes. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, besides all of that, uh, uh, how's things in Oregon? Now, I looked at the map today that Cuomo puts up of the states that are the most affected. And uh, uh, Oregon seems to be not on that list, okay? Oregon is numbers are increasing dramatically. However, we started way down here. Yeah. There had hardly been any. You know, I think we had a week or two ago, there were only just over 100 deaths. Yeah. And now it's over 200. And it's it doesn't look like a Texas or a New York or Arizona, Florida, because we have far fewer people. And we seem to have been doing pretty well until this spike has been happening in a number of places. Well, it doesn't seem to be overwhelming. Right. I mean, yeah. it's lower in that we started so much lower. But it doesn't seem like it's overwhelming the system there. <coughs> I don't think so yet. You know. You know. Um, because in places like Texas, I mean, I just, I, I, you know, I, in, in one respect, I go, Boy, those governors down there were just terrible, and now they're getting what they deserve. But unfortunately, so are the people of those states. You know, I mean, it, it, it's sad, the attitude about this. See, they've turned a, a virus into a political issue. Well, worse, it went further. I think we're in an apocalypse. Oh, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, if you were to draw up a science fiction movie, it would look pretty much like this. Yes. You know, yes. you go down to Broadway... And look at Broadway. Just go online. There, like uh, you know, cams that do Broadway. You look at it. It looks like an, a movie from an apocalypse. Right. Yes, I remember. I've seen those photos. Um, you know, what bothered we, we, just this week, or maybe it was last week, but very recently, mm. the governor issued a mask edict for when you're out and about. Yeah. I can't tell you that. Most of the people I see, old people particularly, are not wearing them. It makes me nuts. It makes me nuts. What is it? Put a mask on. It makes me nuts in this neighborhood when I walk down the street. And I would say Marjorie says it's more like 60, uh, 40, 60% 60 are wearing masks, 40 aren't. I say it's the other way. I tell you, I see about 75% of the people in this neighborhood not wearing masks. And of course, I live in a very predominantly black neighborhood. So the predominant amount of people not wearing masks are black. And I'm thinking, and you better not wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt if you're not wearing a mask, because you're not doing the very thing that will help Black Lives Matter. Because that shouldn't just refer to whether somebody's being racist or not, it should also refer to your respect for them and their life. Well, you know, this all went wrong from the beginning because there were so many mixed messages. Dr. Fauci said in the beginning that masks don't do anything for you, it's only other people. Mm -hmm. And, or, or maybe it was vice versa. I, there's so much information you can't confirm that it gets all mixed up. But, but in the beginning, it was iffy of whether wearing a mask was useful. Do you remember that period? I remember that period. Yes. I, I don't remember it here. And you point. never recover from that kind of thing. You know, and now some, I guess it's mostly far-right political people have turned it into a, it's a hoax or it's a political thing. It means you don't like Donald Trump if you wear a mask uh, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the other thing that's going on that you can just plug into the apocalypse is it seems to me that every single morning, every morning, I get up, I make the coffee, turn on the computer and look at the news, and every morning, Donald Trump has done something that will harm, maim, or kill somebody. 
yesterday that, that just put me around the bend was foreign college students here. Uh, if their college was only going to have long distance teaching, he was going to deport them unless they went to a college where they had in-person teaching. Well, a whole lot of those students, even if you bought the idea, which I don't, a whole lot of those students can't go home because their countries don't let anybody from America in to their countries. Now. Or if you go in, you have to be quarantined. No, you can, no, oh, you really? do, no, you're not. All of Europe, the European Union, you cannot go in if you're coming from America. And, and, and today there was some, oh, today he's going to, he says, he's going to snatch away federal funding for schools, public schools that don't, uh, this fall, who don't open the schools to in-person you, you know, know you, younger. You know, uh, Cuomo went on today and said legally he can't do that. Only the governors right. can decide what's going to go on in their state. That's by, by constitutional edict. And well, that, that he can't do that. He can't do that. He thinks he can do anything he wants. Well, to. I don't know. I don't know that he can't withhold federal funds. I think he might be able to do that. Here's what Cuomo said about that. He said, "You already withhold federal funds. You don't pay us for this. You don't pay us for that. You oh, make oh, I see. Okay. You're making. Is he back to doing doing his morning he routine? Does, he does them every about th maybe three, twice, three times a week now. Okay. You know, and um, it, it, it we're 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 still clean here. You know, it, you're gonna love this because you're a New Yorker, tried and true. Marjorie finally the other day decided to go into her office to pick up the mail. All right, which had been stacked up literally this high, uh, and she went through all of it, and then she did a few things, and finally she had to come home. So she said, "Ah, screw it. I'll try the subway." She took the subway. She said it was absolutely, uh, uh, what was, where was I going with that? I, I, I saw no kidding. Coming home on the subway, Marjorie. Oh, she went on the Yorker. subway. So she went on the subway. She said it has never been so clean in her life. <laughs> I clean them it, every night. She said you wouldn't believe how clean they are. They're sparkling. They're, they're you, 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 and then everybody's sitting a distance from each other, and everybody's wearing masks. She says it may be the safest place to be. Isn't that interesting? Because you know, I somebody I was talking to yesterday about how well New York has done in terms of bringing down the numbers mm -hmm. from the virus. Yeah, uh, and. And the thing that's amazing about it, you'll have to excuse the, the listeners, re, the watchers will have to forgive my forgive my language here. But New Yorkers, the original fuck you people. You want to tell me what to do? Yeah, fuck fuck you. you. Right. They did it this time. They really did it. And the, fa the famous saying it's is... It's a remarkable thing what happened in New York. The famous retort in New York is when you say, to, say to somebody, fuck you, they go, fuck you, fuck, fuck me, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. so New York. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, given how New Yorkers normally behave, they did this right. I'll With tell you, I don't Governor think... Cuomo there every morning saying, saying it over and over and over again, it worked. I don't think that this was unusual for New Yorkers, because New Yorkers, once they have a task in front of them, <laughs> roll up their sleeves and do it. Uh -huh. you know? I think you're right. Yeah, and and it it it's what he refers to every day as New York tough. You know, and, Cuomo does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he also says, but we're also New York smart and New York loving. You know. Now imagine, Alex. Imagine if we had a president who had been behaving that way through all of this. Well, I you know I every day I watch him and I say. I wish he were president. We'd be through this. Well, whether already. him or not, just any person behave in the same way. We would, as a country, in the individual states too, be an entirely different place with the, with the virus. New York proves that. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but it's you know it it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing what we've done here in New York, and now we're having to keep people from other states from coming in, or if they do, they have to quarantine themselves for fourteen days. You know, I've often wondered how that quarantine works. How is the 14 days in, in force? And if you're in a hotel, okay. 
who's cleaning the hotel rooms afterwards? Well, I would well, he, to here's the thing. Yes. In, 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 the ways they're trying to get it is when you get off the plane, they make you sign a thing saying you acknowledge the fact that you have to be quarantined for 14 days. If they're in cars coming from out of state, you can tell by the license plate. And then there's some people that slip under the radar, you know. Hey, I just looked. You know, we've run out of time. Uh, and fast. Uh, and and I love these these chats with you. I have for how I don't know how long we've been doing them now, but more than uh, a year. More than definitely more than a year. Uh, but I really just enjoy them. And of course, we're both in red today. Did you see? Huh? We're uh, both in red today. We, we are in red, aren't we? Oh, I didn't notice that. Yes, we are in red. I wish I had a 1941. Um, yeah, well, you can get them. They're on. Uh, they're on. Uh, <laughs> I bought all the a whole bunch of these uh, from uh, uh, Amazon. Oh. Anyway, Ronnie Bennett can be found at timegoesby.net. That's her blog, and uh, she can be found here every couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Love you, dear. Good to see you, Don. Bye. sixth year this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before yeah yeah i love ronnie i love having her around for as long as we can have her around i just you know i i i wish you were i wish you were beating this thing but it's not beatable so uh in the meantime you just go on living and we go on enjoying each other's company Anyway, uh, listen, uh, if you want to know how to call this program, it's very, very simple. You just simply click on our Zoom link. You can find it at gabnet.net over on the right-hand side of the page towards the bottom. And you can find it on my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett. And let's see here. Uh, also, you can... Um, you can find it, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, it's right down here on the, on the bottom. See there, it says, during program, you can Zoom us at blah, 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 blah. Okay, I don't know who this is, but I'm going to take a chance on them anyway. Uh, let me see here. Dell is the, oh, of course. It's Vernon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Vernon. Let me uh, go to our panel here. Hello, Vernon, how are you? Vernon Nunn. Are you there? Wait a minute, I can't hear you, Vernon. No, you don't have a mic on for some reason. Uh, and I've got everything up here. And let me see here. Let's see here if we can uh, We'll put on Jeff Stein and make sure he's, see if he's talking okay. Hello, Jeff, can you hear me? Well, Jeff is connecting his audio. See yeah, yeah, Jeff's there. So you're not you're not just not putting through some audio there, uh, hey guys. Uh, uh, Vernon. And here comes Charlie, and here comes Rob, and here comes Brian, and Zoom Bomber. It's uh, How about this. Yeah. Okay. Now you're good. Now you're good. Yeah. Yeah. I just switched microphones. Yeah, okay. We'll turn it turn it down just a little bit because it's a little on the hot side. Okay, here yeah. comes Zoom Bomber. I'm betting uh, that this is, oh, never, it, oh, I don't have Zoom Bomber on. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had your chance. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, almighty. How are you all? Good to see you. I, what I love about Zoom is boom, boom, boom. You're all on. You know, no, no, uh, uh, nothing uh, difficult. Uh, so I'm drinking. It's my level now. Oh, it's it's better, much better. Okay. Yeah. I had it on automatic. I switched yeah. it and yeah. not, as long uh, as it's, dialed it down. As long as it's louder than Phil. Uh, because, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I um, I'm drinking tea tonight. I've decided that the reason maybe I'm hoarse, and uh, is I drink coffee about two times a day, and I think maybe the coffee is not good for my my throat lately. What do you? What's Charlie, what's your shirt say? Science. Oh, oh. Science. Yes. Science true. Science is true whether you believe it or not. Yeah, exactly. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, yeah, I love him. Yeah, yeah, that's good. a that's a great statement. I love that, and it's yeah. so it's so apropos of what's going on now. Let me turn my mic yep. up a little bit. I don't sound horse, do I? 
Nah. Okay. Yeah, sound fine. Okay, fine. <clears throat> I have to clear my throat every now and then, but that's why I'm having the tea. So, uh, how y'all doing tonight, uh, Vernon? We haven't seen you in a while. You feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling great. This is my first time on Zoom, I think, with you. Yeah, it works great. You know, I can't complain about it. I, we haven't really had any problems with it, have we, you guys? I, you know, to speak of. Um, uh, well, the Zoom bombers. You know. Yeah, well, the Zoom bombers. It's... Yeah, it looks like I changed my name to Dell. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's probably the name of your computer. Yeah. Yeah, you can change that, by the way. You can rename it. Um in fact, I could probably rename you, actually. Uh, uh, and then uh, let me see here. Uh, so, And you haven't been around in a while, so good to have you here. Uh, you, you know, F Phil's going through the same radiation therapy you went through many years ago. Really? Yeah. What, 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 what week is this? Uh, this is week five. Uh, uh, tomorrow and Friday... Uh, we'll complete week five, and then I'll have two more weeks mm -hmm. after that. Do they give you a little diploma after it's over with? Uh, yeah, what I've noticed is that there's this bell in the hallway, and when people have their last uh, radiation treatment, yeah. they ring the bell. And uh, since I get there at uh, 730 in the morning, people uh, have their last. I don't need the bell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, since you're the, oh, you don't need the bell? No, no, it's, uh, I'd rather have some peace and quiet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought, I, I said to them, I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to be through with mine. Uh, what are we doing when I, when I finish it? And they say, oh, we give you a diploma. Yeah. Well, I never saw a diploma. They were putting me on. Yeah, I guess you, they you know. were. So, anyway, you know, it, it's, uh, but it, it, it's pretty easy to get through, right, Phil? You're not feeling... No, I, I get I get a little tired by the afternoon, but that's because I've been getting up at four in the morning. I've I've got a prep, uh, and uh, what, and, what do you mean then, prep? Well, you got to poop because if you don't poop, and I and I've been constipated, uh, the the radiation can damage your bowels, and then you've got to drink the water, and you've got to be fully hydrated when you drink the water, otherwise it won't uh, get to the bladder. Did you so, did you have to go through that, uh, Vernon? The water thing? Not that I recall. No. Yeah. yeah. Speaking well, of prep, did you hear from Tony? Uh, yeah, once uh, he said something about the stuff didn't taste good, so I think that was early on. Uh, I'm sure he's uh, not bringing his uh, laptop into the bathroom. Yeah, he, he says he's flowing very well. <laughs> well, no, they have they have citric nitrate, or it's, I think it's called citric nitrate, and that's what I do whenever I'm supposed to do the cleaning out before a colonoscopy. Yeah. You, you do the same thing, right, uh, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. It's just right. like, the last two I did. Yeah. You just that. pour it into a glass. Pour, I, had to go through I, I put it on ice, chill it a bit. I like my uh, yeah. vodka. No, no vodka. <laughs> <laughs> But then I, I just put it. Nice I, I just put it in a in a, uh, in, a, in a in a glass and uh, just chug the whole thing down in one gulp, and uh, yeah. it's fine oh. until, of course, a couple hours later when yeah. what should be staying in keeps coming out. You know what you worry about in that prep is that they tell you also to do it the next morning as well, just before you come in, about three hours before you come in, and you go. I just hope. That it's it's through doing whatever it's going to do before I get in, yeah. You know the lift car, and poop all over his back seat. You know. <laughs> now you don't uh, eat anything prior to going in, so there may be nothing left. Yeah. Well, I yeah no you don't eat, you don't eat. Yeah, there's still more stuff. Wow. Yeah, but all I had to do with mine was I had to do the water every time because it, it, they had to, for some reason, the bladder had to be full so it would push the prostate or something in, in a certain way so that it was uh, it could be radiated just right. Yeah. Uh, but I went through a different situation than you. I went through the, what is this? They call it the cyber knife, but uh, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my thing is the Varian Linear Accelerator True Beam. Uh, they say that that's one of them. There's a couple different deals, and they say that this and the other one are very advanced and new technology. Yeah, but if it's still taking seven weeks, it ain't that new. 
uh, well, it's at least five weeks old. The, I mean, the, 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 the cyber knife, or is, it's called stereotactic is what it is. This is stereotactic also. They're all stereotactic. They no, say. stereotactic is a very focused beam. That's what this is. And they're doing that many? They, they only do five. Uh, well, for you, uh, maybe uh, because they could focus on the prostate. On me, I don't have a prostate, so they're focusing on the margins uh -oh. or the areas around the prostate, and they couldn't see any cancer because they only got a detectable PSA. Couldn't you say to them, listen, give me a call when you can see it? Uh, I'd you rather know? them just barrage the area and, you know, not harm the bowel or the, or the uh, what do you call it, the bladder, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, get rid of it because... The alternative to that will be hormones for as long as I live. By the way, I have a uh, fun thing that happened. I, you know, I've been talking about how bad they've been about my numbers on and statistics on uh, on, uh, uh, on on uh, what do you call it? Uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wrote them and I complained and I said, "How could I have lost sixty people in one night?" And in the meantime, I've been asking people to sign up like crazy. And the, here comes Tony, by the way. Uh, and, and so, and so they. Uh, 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 so I just went here tonight, and now I'm up to 1,136. So I got yeah. all the people really? to join, plus the ones that I had, and now I got 1,136. So. Oh wow! What the hell? Embarrassment of riches. So I don't hate YouTube today. I'll hate so him tomorrow. Get to a hundred thousand, uh, they give you another award, don't they? What? Uh, well, uh, they. I I know my friend who has six hundred thousand. I don't uh, want to hear about your friend with six hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> they get a plaque, uh, you know, at a hundred and five hundred and uh, five dollar plaque. Well, uh, I have a lot yeah. of plaque, and my I go to the dentist twice a year, and they scrape it off. <laughs> I have oh, tons of awards, and they're all like four dollar awards. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Take your plaque and shove. Tell him to take his plaque and shove it. You know. Yeah. Well, I, also uh, they they get uh, monetized, and uh, they're making some money. Not a, not a lot, but yeah. So. Well, less yeah. and less every day. Yeah. Yeah. They, they they I I so far I think I've made seventy dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ooh. and they don't pay me until I make a hundred. Well, so, well, you know, I'm sure you'll share it with the other host. I certainly, I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll spread the riches around. Yeah, it'll 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 pay for uh, no, two months of Zoom uh, subscription. Yeah. But, uh, uh, anyway, oh, also, Rob, how are you tonight? Good. Thank you. How he, about you? He, I'm, I'm I'm fine. I've been. I've been, I don't know, I've just been having this thing, and it comes and goes. And as long as it comes and goes, I figure it's not anything serious. It would be getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, but it's like, I think it's maybe from drinking coffee too much, and that it's kind of like, because I feel it right in here. Do you put milk in the coffee? Maybe no. it's the phlegm from... No. Uh, they say dairy uh, products, too much dairy will give you... No, I don't hmm. do that. You know. Alex? Yes. What, um, Phil? What, Phil? I have a friend that lives in Florida. And he's that, got 10,000 subscribers. No, he, <laughs> he, he suggested, he was listening to the show, oh. and, and he suggested that you might look to see if there's a mold source uh, in the apartment, and possibly that might be causing well I've, I've heard i've heard about that and and i've, uh, I've we've thought about looking into it but you know you got to hire somebody to come in and check for the mold and all of that you know maybe the the uh, super can uh do a cursory i am sure if you could find mold in any building in new york this building which is 120 years old has <clears throat> got to have some mold in it well, if that's the case, you can treat it with bleach or something. But then and, why why am I just having this problem in the last month or so? Maybe there's some mold growth in the last month. Oh, I have to look at no, my it's hotter now. You need you need three things for mold. You need heat, yeah. you need calcium, uh, and you need water. And Washer. with those three things, uh, you'll well, get mold. Well, we don't have water and we don't have calcium and we I'll know that 
uh, you don't have a leak in a pipe or something. Phil is the expert on everything, ladies well, and gentlemen. Floors, floors, mold, hey, and stuff if you've like got that, if you've got I some do. kind of medical floors problem, floors. call up tonight. Phil will solve it for you. Well, it, it relates back to flooring. You <laughs> it know, doesn't relate I'm, back. You can only relate. You can't relate back. Right. All right. I relate to flooring because I have to deal with mold and people for and people's mold floors and things. You know, I, I do a lot of work for insurance companies where there's uh, a, a water loss. So I have to be aware of those things and I can't cover it up. Yeah, well, I don't know what this is, but all I know is I come in here and I do the show and I feel better. And so I think it may be the air conditioner in here or something is cleaning the air for me. But yeah. my, I'm hoarse again tonight. <clears throat> so I don't. Know. Do, do you find that the another air conditioned room uh, is is where you uh, feel the discomfort? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That air conditioner could because there's water and uh, from from the air conditioner and uh, it's hot and there's uh, there's other things. Maybe that's oh, blowing yeah. some yeah. sort of mold yeah. spores yeah. into the room. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, anyway. I, you know, I all I know is it it it, it, it it's something I got to go out more. That's what I got to do. You you know, I just, yeah. And every day I say I'm going to go out, and then I look at the temperature, and it says 90 degrees, and I go, well, fuck that. Oh, in the morning. Huh? Yeah. We're seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what, what time of day did you say? Well, seven, eight o'clock in the what? morning. Have a cup of coffee and what? go. What? Yeah. What? I haven't I'm heard you work three hours. Good. What do you think I? What do you think I am? A farmer? <laughs> Come on. I'm up at like six. The sun's out. I I haven't seen six eight o'clock. Well, I do see eight o'clock in the morning occasionally, but it's because I have to get up to pee. Okay, but that's it. <laughs> okay, get up, pee, go for a walk. Then what I do? Here's the latest thing I've been doing. So I I haven't taken any kind of pill to put me to sleep for like three weeks, and so I have no problem getting to sleep at night now. Right, but then about six o'clock in the morning. I get this urge to pee because, you know, that's what happens when you're older or have had your prostate punctured like it was a, a you know, a needle thing. Cushion. A pin, pin cushion. cushion. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then I go to the bathroom, but then I have a little trouble getting back to sleep. So I go into the kitchen where we have a vape and I take a, a, a vape of pot and just enough, just one, puts me back to sleep. Then I get up again around 8 o'clock. I need to go back to sleep after going to the bathroom. I do the vape again. The trouble is, every time I do the vape, it's good for another three hours, so I sleep like nine hours now. <laughs> yes, Howard. Aha! Maybe that's what's giving you the sore throat. Well, it isn't a sore throat. It's not a sore throat. But it's, it's like are a... Are you drinking water after you hit your vape? Oh, well, I do, yeah, I do take some soda. Take some... As long as you get hit, chasing it with some water, that should help. Yeah, yeah, no, I, because I don't, I, I uh, do, t you know, take some tea, some iced tea, some Snapple or whatever, uh, because it does kind of make your throat feel a little rough. So what are you having there? What is your beverage? It is iced tea. It's good earth iced tea. Oh, Spiced really? Spiced iced tea. Oh, okay. Well, this is, uh, this is just Twining's. Oh, um, what's that? Tony had to go to the bathroom. What? Uh -oh. Another reason. That Tony, had, Tony had to go to the bathroom already. Tony? He he don't, no, he, you don't have to go to the bathroom after. <laughs> you know. He's, he's drinking his stuff. I want to find out from him because, you know, he was such a coward about the whole thing. You know, he didn't realize that it's, it's pretty damn simple, you know. And after you've gone through what I've gone through, you see, I, I, this prep you do for the colonoscopy, it's the same prep you do, for instance, when I had my pin cushion uh, operation, okay, where they put in the seeds in my prostate. And uh, in that case, I had to do another operation beforehand in which they put a spacer between my prostate and my rectum so my rectum wouldn't get radiated. Did they do that to you at all? Uh, they did that to you, Vernon. But they yep. didn't do it to Phil. Five days a week, nine weeks. Yeah, but they did they also have an operation where they put a spacer in there between they your They did that each time they treated me. They, they put that little spacer in there. Oh, it was really? like a little balloon that they inflated 
oh, well, this is instead of the balloon now, they've got, you, you have to go in and they put you under, but they put in this gel that separates it. So, and that's good for about three months, and then it dissipates and comes out in your pee. Huh. Very expensive pee. What color was it? I have no idea. No, no, the pee. Same color. They, they color it so it looks like pee. Okay, Phil. Hey, listen, Tony. How's your ass doing? <laughs> right now. Huh? Yeah. I did it at ten to five, and I was like, "Oh, this isn't this isn't too bad." It was it was bad news when you. I drank it fast though. Next time, tell them you want the citric nitrate. I think it's called. Or citric. You know what yeah. I, drink? I had to drink thirty two ounces of water then in the next hour. So I docked it off in like fifteen twenty minutes. So. I went, it just started like I got the urge to go. So I had to run downstairs because my mother was in the bathroom after dinner because they had, they had Chinese food today in front of me. It was horrible. Wait a minute. He's improving. It was called Chinese food this time. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Call changes. <laughs> it's not, just in case they get a Chinese doctor if, tomorrow. If, you ch <laughs> if, you're able, if you're able to change, there's hope for Phil. There yeah. is. There is. I don't know about that, but he's got a lot of vent up frustration. But, but out in bed, it tastes horrible. No, but you see, you didn't. Next time, and there yeah. will be a next time. One more at 12 o'clock. Yeah, I have another bottle in there. Oh, you're, you haven't <laughs> you done. Have you haven't done. You, you have another. I got to take the second one at midnight. Oh, you haven't done the colonoscopy morning. yet. No. no, I need. Mom, I'm on you. What are you She's doing the prep. <laughs> hey, Tony, oh, so, is it lemon flavored? Nice. I got one more bottle. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Just stay there, everybody. I got to go find something here. This one I finished. It's empty. And I got one more left for midnight. It's horrible. Oh, the stuff I had was like a powder, and you had to add, like, I thought there it was like, it seemed like a gallon of water. Yeah, this one is smaller. This is, oh, okay. Okay, I got the, the mm -hmm. name of it. You tell your doctor next time you don't the want piper. you don't want that 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 stuff they're giving you. You want this. This yeah. is. Oh, what is that? That looks like salsa. Yeah, that, it's called magnesium much, yeah. citrate oral solution. Tell them you want the magnesium citrate. Yeah. You take get two bottles of these. You can get them in different flavors. They come in strawberry and orange and. Uh, uh, um, and then uh, tutti frutti, I don't know, whole bunch of flavors, <laughs> and and you uh, just to put this a little in the refrigerator, let it get good and cold, and then throw it in a glass, and chug a lug it. Right, that's what you did, yeah. Charlie. And then yeah. later, then the next morning, you do it one more time. That's all you've got to do. That's all you've got to drink. Those gallons. Yeah. I got to do two drinks. I got one more to do. Yeah, but you got you got that stuff where they that that that, that gruel. It's the, bad. Yeah, that they I make it. Yeah, yeah. I mixed it up and I drank it real quick. And then I, you know what hurt me more? That thirty-two ounces of water. I felt like a fucking balloon. I don't know about that part of it. Did you have to drink water? I have to drink thirty-two ounces no. of water. With no, no. So you does not get the. I do this, and then also before I go to bed, I take two, like a, like two laxative pills. And then when I wake up in the morning, I take another one of these, and in between the two, I'm I'm pretty clean inside. Off to the bathroom again. I yeah. got a drink. <laughs> Gee, we've actually been gaining audience while we've been talking about how to shit your brains out. <laughs> did you ever have? Did you ever have a colonoscopy, uh, um, Rob? Yet? No. No. It's coming. No. I'm no. surprised. Why don't you want? I had my first one at 48. No, yeah. Just because I don't want it. Why don't you oh. want? It? Oh, 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 oh! Why don't you? Okay. Why don't you want it? Because it's ridiculous. If you don't have it in your family, uh, you never get a colonoscopy. You use that. If you don't have it in your family, it's just something that they get paid money, yeah. money, money, money. <laughs> if you have a high risk of it in your family, I get it. Do you do yeah, that? I, that's what my doctor said too, Mike. So why don't I we get every? Why don't we get every test available to to man for cancer <laughs> if that's the case? Yeah, I just don't, my, I, I I just. Rob, do you do that yearly fit test where you take some poop and you yep. wipe it on oh, a that's thing? Oh, COVID gone. I'm just going to yeah. yeah, 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 you know, in a no. container and they send it in. No. That's the one I do. That's yeah. the one I do. That's what yeah, I do. How does that thing work? 
but I'm going I to I hear be- that there are too many uh, false positives in that, and that's why I won't do it. Really? Because I'll, I'll, I'll obsess over what it. What false positives? False positives in what? For the, for the Cola Guard. The Cola Guard. I mean, Cola Guard is... What is that? It, you know, I mean... It's I, where you've seen the commercial for you, it. You put the pool in the box and you mail yeah, it. And yeah, you, you send your off. shit through the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Hazard Iser gives us one. It's it's not color guard, but it's the same type of deal where you got to yeah. put in this little hazardous bag. But the, but just like Rob, my doctor. So I asked him because I took that one three years in a row, mm-hmm. and I asked him. I said, all my friends are returning fifty. They're doing the colonoscopy, and I said, why are you not doing that for me? He says, well, you don't have that. You have more heart conditions because I have heart conditions in my family. Mm-hmm. And he says, if you want to do that, we we'll can do that. But the yearly is sufficient for how your family has been. So. Same thing as like Rob saying. Yeah, well, I it, it, uh, it uh, I, I mean, I've had some polyps, you know, after I had it. And um, have you had it, Phil? Have you had a colonoscopy? Oh, uh, by I the ju- way, I, yeah. I was just contacted uh, to get a hold of them to set it up, but I'm going to do it after the radiation. Yeah, don't yeah. don't do it all at the same time, you know. What you do is you get you get a colonoscopy, an endoscopy, mm. and a cystoscopy, <laughs> and you have them. You have all the doctors in the room at the same time. They put you out, and then they all go in the various parts of you: the penis, the ass, the whatever. And and, and then then as an added surprise, since they're they're filming the whole thing, you know, they can film the whole thing. They should film it. And we can see if they can see each other. <laughs> That movie Saw, Saw, where they always have those weird things, that's what they should do in Saw. Saw 10, the guys leaped up there and the camera's going in. Well, in uh, in, uh, in Guantanamo, who was it, uh, uh, Sheikh Khalid or whatever his name was, that they they waterboarded like 50 times, and by the 50th time he was showing up with like sunscreen. You know, I mean, (laughs) he was so used to it. Um, oh. I figured that the, what they should have done for him, since they had a very good medical facility at Guantanamo, is just give him a colonoscopy and a cystoscopy, and a, uh, w- but just don't put him out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, waterboard him. Sigmoidoscopy. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yeah. I signed up for mine at fifty. You signed up for fifty-ish right for, for what? Yeah. For the colonoscopy because my dad never got a colonoscopy and died of colon cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you don't have, you didn't fill just uh, Rob, just because you didn't have it in your family. I'll take the risk. Okay. Hey yeah, Rob, fine. I don't, don't have even it want, in my I don't family. even want to talk about it. Excuse me. I, I've had it. I've had to have three cause I get really bad, like pre cancerous polyps. I usually get like six to 10 of them. Mm. So I've had three of them and I don't have it in my family. I'm just telling you. Mm. That's, that's I'm glad. Fine. I'm so glad I went. My, it's my, not bad. You don't even know. You don't even. You're well, the asleep. good the good thing about it is, is that if you let's say they find a precancerous polyp, mm-hmm. my doctor said if we find one, I said, well, okay, so you then you cut it out of me, right? And he said, right. I said, how long before another one could grow and be dangerous? He said, if one started growing tomorrow, it'd be ten yeah. years before it was dangerous. So, really, what you're doing is you're staying ahead of the game. That's the reason you yeah. do it. I don't mind, you know. I mean, I did it, and uh, the first time, and I wondered what was going to go on, and it was so. Except for the prep is the worst part of it. The prep, yeah, it's horrible. I'm really worried about getting knocked out, Alex. That's what scares me because I never was put under before. Well, I, I had that fear too. Don't worry about it. You, you yeah. won't know you've been put out. That's they don't the, put you all the way. Either. It's anything. not like. Well, you, I woke up in the middle of my first one and watched part of it. Really? I don't want to wake Dude, up. I watched it. Yeah. A sigmoidoscopy? Well, I'll tell you what I No, no, no. It was a colonoscopy, and I woke up, and they just let I said, I'm, they said, you all right? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I wanted to watch it. And, uh, I well, remember saying, oh, shit, that hurts. But then I don't remember the pain. All I remember is saying it. <laughs> it tell you, so the weird. prostate seeds, the prostate seeds. <laughs> I they they didn't give me um, they didn't put me out they didn't give me the propofol or whatever uh, I yeah. said aren't you going to put me out and he went no we're going to do a spinal 
in which they, I don't know, go into your back and they shoot you Epi up with some epidural. stuff. Epidural. Well, it's called a spine. Yeah, it's it, a spinal epidural. Yeah. This is and, spinal tap. And, and it numbs everything from your waist down. And I told Patrick, now I know what it's like to be you, you know. <laughs> really, because you don't feel, there's nothing, un forget it. But uh, they, he's, I said, but I'm going to know what's going on. He said, yeah, but I'm going to put you, give you so much happy juice that you won't care. And so he, he loaded me up with liquid Valium. And I swear, it was as good as if he had put me out. The only difference being that he didn't. And I had some kind of awareness of what was going on, which I've never had before because they've always put me out. So I'm lying there, and I'm, I'm, I'm in la-la land, but I'm hearing them talk to each other. And I finally yeah. heard what... Doctors talk to each other about the anesthesiologist and my doctor and so on. And it's something like this. So where are you going this weekend? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think we're going to go to the shore. Hey, that sounds great. You know, my wife and I, we're thinking of going out to dinner. Yeah. And just all these conversations that they're having back and forth. Why? Because you don't think he's doing that and going, I've got to be very careful with where I'm yeah. putting this. You know? I don't want to be the wrong uh, yes, <laughs> yes, Vernon. Oh God! They're gonna be talking. Rob, yeah. I know you're. I know you don't want to worry about it, but I didn't either until my my GP suggested one. And when I had the first one done, they found one polyp. So he said, "Okay, you know, we'll we'll wait five years before we do it again." Mm -hmm. So five years later, they found six. Hmm. They said, "Oh well." We need to check you again in three Something's years. Get you some so time or in three years, we again. went back in. They found six. Whoa. Well, you know, you're a polyp maker. So three years later, they go back in. They found one. One. Yeah. So it's now we're back to five years. So now we're five years before I get checked again. I don't have to go back because um, uh, he told me, he said, even if one starts growing tomorrow, you'll be dead before it gets bad. Oh, at, your age, at your age. And I went, oh, that's one of the perks. <laughs> Thank Jesus. That's, that's one of the perks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, tell you, I tell you what I think, what I think reduced the number of polyps. I can't scientifically prove this, but after getting six two times in a row, I started taking fiber caplets on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Well, I started fiber taking fiber caplets. Well, after I started doing the fiber caplets, and then I had my colonoscopy, I only had one. Yeah. So I think I had a lot to do with it. I uh, I only had one this last time, and I think the reason for it was Trump because uh, <laughs> he he gets me so mad. My ass clenches a lot, <laughs> and and that has uh, that has kind of I think prevented me from having more polyps. They abort. They, they self abort. They abort. Yeah. 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 It's like, well, then, you, then you need to worry about diverticulitis. Oh yeah. No oh yeah. Well, I have di I have diverticulitis, um, but they're you know they didn't have to do anything about it. They just, just only they only they had to, they said once you have your third attack in three years, then we'll do something about it. But uh, I, and I haven't had I had two attacks and that was about it. You know. So. Mm. But anyway. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, oh, our president. <laughs> Apparently doesn't know what he's able to do or not do according to the Constitution. <clears throat> yeah, um, he's going to open schools on his own. Well, he said that he is going to prevent schools. Well, a couple of things. Number one, he says all schools must open in the fall. My proclamation. Well, he can't do that because it is a Phil. Can you let me? Fi you don't even know what I'm going to finish saying. Yeah, but I'll tell you why you can do it when you're ready. He can't do it, Phil. The Constitution forbids him from doing it. This is something only the governors can do, okay, of the individual states, by the Constitution. Secondly, secondly, in the immortal words of Cuomo today, who said, and then he said, all states that don't abide by this aren't going to get any kind of funding from us. He says, we're not getting funding from you now. You stopped right. all the funding. That's not any kind of threat. I believe that the foreign students are here on a student visa. We're not talking about foreign students, Phil. 
Well, that's what he was talking no, about. No, he wasn't. Oh, he was talking yeah. about high schools and grade, and grade schools. schools. He wants yeah, them open, open, but he can't do anything about that. But at universities, uh, the Phil, universities he... are talking about having one one credit class that these kids can uh, attend so that they qualify for in, in uh, credit classes and uh, they can circumvent what Trump came out with, which was to tell ICE and Immigration uh, Service to uh, simply not attending classes. You, can you don't even listen. Them. That's not even what Alex was talking about. You're completely bringing up a completely different yes, subject. But no, it has nothing to do with what Alex just said. Of course, because what he's doing is he's using that as a pressure to get the governors to open uh, the schools. In other and words, so, he's being the bully that he normally is. Uh, I don't know if he's being the bully, but what he's doing is he's using that as a as a wedge to uh, accomplish uh, what he wants Nothing. to do with schools. What's he accomplishing? He's just making himself look he's foolish again. Put, he's trying to put pressure on... And he's uh, going to uh, make himself look he's foolish an idiot. again, even if he he's succeeds. He's trying to kill our kids. He's an idiot. And but he's going to kill my kids. Good. Fuck him. The pressure this, that he's going to do. This is what he has... In his qui- uh, in his quiver, in the order dick. to uh, try to get reelected, well, fuck him. Uh, That's all that matters is his reelection sucks. bid. He doesn't give a damn about anything else. The only time he himself. ever quivered was when he heard they were going to draft Otherwise, him. Otherwise, why would he really care if the schools were open or not? Because you can't open the economy with when the schools are closed. Uh, you, and why does he care so much about the economy being open? Because he uh, wants to be re-elected. reelected. Ah, well, that's, so no that's, that's no reason. That's no reason to do bad medicine, Phil. Yeah. Now, he also feels, uh, you know, based on the science, that the young kids aren't as susceptible to the COVID. That's what he feels. And Phil, Phil he ask any parent, wrong. including yourself. They can and, still be carriers. How many here? Yeah. How many here have been parents? One, two, three, four, five. When your kids were going to school, how many times did they bring back colds? <laughs> uh-huh. Million, million, yeah, a few times, and lice. lice. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, maybe they don't get it, but they can yeah. carry it. He doesn't they care. Their hair he, he, wait a minute, wait, wait, let Rob talk. What Rob? I mean, I just that's it. He doesn't care. He doesn't <clears throat> care about you or anybody else but himself. I that's all he and remember. About. And remember the age group that was hitting in March and April. Right, the, the what? Everybody's uh, sixty-five. Remember the age group that everybody was worried about before. Mm-hmm. Now it's coming down. I mean, what happens if this continues to come down? They don't know. They're, they're finding a lot of forty-year-olds. We had a forty-one-year-old die the other day. This yeah. Broadway guy. Yeah. Uh, like Thirty-five uh, to forty. And, now. and they're finding that younger people are dying of this. They, if yeah. they don't die of it, they get a flu that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And they're not even sure what this flu. Mm-hmm. does in the aftermath there are some people yeah. say six months later they're going to still be feeling stuff you know or so the silent spreaders. spreaders there's, there's a, a silent yeah. spreaders yeah there's a story out there about it. organ damage organ yep. damage too yep, yep. Th- this it broadway guy went through hell yeah i think they I mean, amputated had, they amputated his leg didn't they yeah they amputated his leg he had pneumonia he went into a coma it was mm-hmm. horrible hmm. three months and of also hell. and what about the teachers yeah, what How about are the kids going to teach with no teachers? Yeah, that's they're the spreaders. They're going to give them to the teachers. Well, uh, that's in, that's an interesting point, and that's what the teachers are saying is that they don't want the schools to reopen because they're afraid for their health, even though right. they're, the kids may not get it. Right. Uh, so that's 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 where it's at. I'm I'm not being committal one way or but, another. But, you know, I don't know where where Donald Trump ever got his medical degree because he doesn't know shit. He really doesn't. And he won't listen to the people who do know shit. Yeah. But today on the lawn, he was bad. And by the way, I mentioned literally. shit, Tony, but just try to hold it in. Okay? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ray was saying what I was saying last night. Right? Ray about Fauci. Mm-hmm. Trump's against Fauci now. Really bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, he was dead. He, he was dead. You, you bad can't now say that. anything. Absolutely trashing him yesterday. You can't yeah. say anything that goes against what's good for him. Yeah. He doesn't want to hear it. You know, uh, I I asked uh, Siri, "What is the science of COVID?" 
And uh, it basically came back and said that there are 4,000 papers on COVID just this week that were uh, developed. And, and Trump hasn't read one. They're, they're all over the place. Phil, they can be okay. all over the place. I'll give you a little statistic that they don't have to do a big uh, thing about. And who, who left us? Uh, Ray. Oh, Ray. I guess he'll come back. Um, um, and that is the amount of people who are dead Okay, yeah. 100, oh, over 130,000 people dead. That's the statistic you got to pay attention to, Phil. That's the science you should, pay, you should be paying attention to. It's the science he should be ashamed of, okay? But, you know, you can say anything you want to about there are 20,000 different <clears throat> opinions about what causes this. There's only one opinion about what these people died of. Okay, 130,000 so far. And they're saying if Trump doesn't start getting America to wear masks by just just wearing one himself and saying, I've decided it's a good idea. He is going to add 50,000 people by October to the death rolls. Isn't it the governors that are saying that the masks are mandatory? That's what they're doing in California. Finally, finally. But, just but that doesn't week. mean anything, right? It well, doesn't no, mean it, anything. You can't it, mandate it. Okay, how many? What percentage of the American public are Trump followers right now, Phil? Give me your About overbloated estimate. Thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight percent. Okay, those thirty-eight percent are not going to wear a mask if right. he doesn't wear a That's mask. That's not true. I follow Trump, and I I, I wear a mask. Matter yeah. of fact, I just bought fifty today at the paint store. Really? Yeah. yeah. What kind? So, uh, the, the the surgical ones, so I can yeah. hand them out at my store when yeah. customers come yeah. in. I can offer them a free, uh, you know, a fresh mask. Yeah. yeah. Do you uh, refuse customers who don't wear one? I haven't had any that didn't. I haven't had to do that. Mm -hmm. Would you? Uh, I'll wear it, and uh, not necessarily. Charlie, yes. uh, you're in Texas. Boy, are you dying like flies there. I don't even leave the 20,000 cases in the last two days. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Now, I suppose, and you're in Austin, which I think is the hot zone, isn't it? Uh, hospitals are 100% full. Yeah. yeah. What's the age group that is going in for hospitalization now? Is there a, is it the 20 to 40 or uh, is it still the 60? I haven't seen any stats like that. I think Brian will agree with me on this one, that it doesn't really matter your age. If you go into the hospital, you didn't go into the hospital because you needed a rest, as Cuomo said today. Yeah, you, you went in symptoms. because you had symptoms and you were not feeling well and you wanted to be taken care of. So it doesn't matter what the age group is. <clears throat> but it how is getting younger. It is getting a lot younger. There, did they say how many? You want to know why it's getting uh, younger, Brian? I'll tell you why it's getting younger. For the reason why, so far, I haven't got it. I haven't left the house. Right. Charlie yeah, hasn't left people, the house. The younger I people know are taking the chances. The younger, people are, oh, younger people are taking the chances. And they're yeah. being stupid. And they're seeing a spike now in Tulsa after yeah. the president's. Yeah. Two weeks after the. Yeah, you asked that question the other day, Phil, about, gee, were there any cases after uh, the uh, Tulsa uh, uh, speech? Yes. 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 We're having them now. But uh, if you're homeless or you're a rioting, they don't get COVID. How would you know? What, 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 is, what does that have to do with what we just said, Phil? You said because the Trump thing in Tulsa. You asked the other day, you said, well, there haven't been any cases of COVID from that, uh, that, uh, that speech he gave. Yes, yes. there have been. All right. It's, we needed to uh, they, get the they two were weeks. saying today that uh, the media is ignoring the COVID cases from those that rioted. And uh, no, they're not. They no, they're not, Phil. Well, no, they're not. They, no, they, as a matter of fact, Cuomo uh, was, has said he has had concern about the people who protested. That he he certainly is with the protesters, but he he worries about the contagion that it might cause. What they're finding is that in New York, they wore masks, a lot of them. They wore masks. They wore masks. They didn't necessarily socially distance, but the reason you wear a mask is because you might not be socially distant. If you're going to be socially distant, you don't even need the mask. Uh, 
and that they were outdoors in which the the spread is different outdoors than it is in an enclosed uh, like restaurant or whatever and and so they found that uh, the numbers our numbers are like have gone up a little bit just a, a t couple of tenths of a point but so far those uh, those demonstrations haven't proved to be lethal now what we're worried about is what's been going on out in fire island especially out in the pines uh, where uh, uh, all the gay guys just can't, you know, they, 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 didn't, they didn't remember how they got AIDS. Yeah. Okay? You know? And they're being just absolutely ridiculous out there. And he's worried about that. And they, when they find a hot spot, they usually find, they found a hot spot in New Jersey. And it was caused by some people who came up from one of the contagious states to go to a wedding. So, you know... These are the kind of things that are causing it. Um, but, uh, you know, the demonstrators, really, the, the contagion from that uh, is almost negligible. But with the Trump rally, it was indoors. All his rallies since have been outdoors. Yes. But, uh, you know, when uh, where it started in New York was up in Westchester. Uh, it was that... Uh, New Jewish Rochelle. Country. New Rochelle. Mm -hmm. uh, is that still a hot spot? No, it has been a hot spot in three, four months. Since it, 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 the, it died as a hot spot once they realized it, it was, was the a hot first spot. Hot spots. It was yeah. the first yeah. hot spot. Yeah. They well, the, the, initial got in there. the very first hot spot was Washington in that uh, nurse, nursing home nursing in Washington. Yeah, Washington yeah. State, yeah. Yeah, but uh, our hot spots were, you got to realize, the COVID we got in New York is different than the COVID they got in Washington. Yeah. You know. I understand that that COVID is coming now to California, that it's the, it's the, it's the New York or the European strain that uh, is, is re not reinfecting, but infecting others. In, well, that's, uh, because, that's because your, 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 your president uh, didn't close uh, the borders here to Europe uh, a month and a half earlier. When he closed off China, he should have closed off Europe, too, because only lot of, and Europe was starting to get cases, and he didn't close it down. You heard where Mexico is closing their borders because of the infection rate in the yes, U.S.? Yes, they're building a yeah, wall. <laughs> Very happy for the wall. Treaty today. They may pay for a wall after all to keep us out. Uh, yes. Obrador had great uh, things to say about Trump during the treaty signing uh, uh, in the White House. No, wonderful. That's good. They're good. I'm glad yeah. we have Mexico's blessings. Um, how about the guy in Brazil? How about the head of the president of Brazil? Yeah, he's positive. Yeah. You know, uh, the Atlanta mayor is too, right? Bottoms? Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. The one, the Atlanta mayor. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Aaron this guy, Bush. this guy was the was the real idiot. He was a big an idiot as Trump is about this, and and he's come down with it. He's been good. I, I hope he gets real sick so he can see the misery he inflicted on the rest of his country. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. I I heard today talking to people in Arizona, mm -hmm. and then looking on TV that Arizona is becoming like twenty five percent. The people in a certain Arizona area. has hit a higher peak in yeah. total yeah. COVID in patients, else? higher than New York ever was. Oh, really? uh, was that because of the farm workers and uh, no. migrant workers? No, that no. no. It's, it's because of stupid the Arizonans it's and their governor. The, the governor, the governor did not uh, require indoor mask when you're indoors. And Trump had a rally in Arizona, yeah. Phil. You said Tucson was the only one. He went to a religious uh, organization oh, yeah. in, I think, Phoenix. Indoors, in Phoenix. Indoors. Yeah. All young people, nobody wearing masks. Brilliant. Here's the thing, too. I'll tell you what's happening, what happened here in New York. And again, you know, I have a great deal of uh, love for Cuomo because I think he helped save my life. Um, uh, while at the same time, I feel Trump's trying to kill me. But anyway, the, the <laughs> fact of the matter is that it was uh, a very unpopular thing for a governor, a guy who's elected to office, to do, to close down businesses. But as soon as he saw what was happening, there was no question in his mind what he had to do. Politics be damned. His future Same be thing damned. In Kentucky. And Same he thing closed in Kentucky. it he closed it all down. 
And just recently, he said, I'm not reopening the, uh, the restaurants yet, the indoor, indoor uh, 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 fee- eating, dining, because he says it's, you know, it's a big problem. Um, restaurants in my area, in Walnut Creek, are uh, like Prima Restaurant. 43 years they were in business. They just closed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a number of restaurants that were landmark restaurants that are. are it's going to happen to a lot of them, but that's yeah. what we had to do. I mean, what you have to do, Phil, is you have to weigh commerce against lives. And when you use that as your, as your, 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 your uh, touchstone, you got to go for saving lives before you well, go for saving that, businesses. If that's the case, why isn't Walmart, Home Depot, and Lowe's closed? How can they be open? How can abortion clinics be open? But uh, stores uh, or why did you bring up a, a Walmart, uh, uh, Costco, and abortion clinics? How do those all come together? Oh, and also liquor stores and Churches. marijuana dispensaries. Those can be open. But well, you you know, go ask your go ask your governor about that. We well, we, we don't right. have the same situation here in New York. Yes, Jeff has his hand up. Listen, I get stuff from Costco all the time. I haven't been there for six months. Me neither. My wife doesn't go there. Nobody goes there. But there are people. Instacart. Who use Instacart. Deliver the stuff for us. I had a delivery today. They drop it outside. I could speak firsthand for Home down. Depot. What? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I could speak firsthand for Home Depot. Okay. Mm-hmm. When this first hit, when this first hit back in April, we started limiting the number of customers in the store at any mm-hmm. point in time. They had apps on smartphones and they had one entrance and one exit and they had an employee standing at both of them and they had an interactive app that told how many people were in the store mm-hmm. at any point in time. Yeah. That has since been relaxed, but they, they do want, they don't reject you, they don't keep you from coming in if you don't have a mask on, Vernon. but they do require all their employees to wear masks. Vernon, why can't a restaurant limit the number of people? That because it's indoors, it's, Phil, and because the air conditioning, the air conditioning research, wait a minute, smaller. let me let me finish it, if, if, Phil, because you don't know the science of this. The fact is that they're all air conditioned inside, and the air conditioning simply recycles the air that's already there, and if the uh, COVID is in the air and people are going to, in a restaurant, they're not going to have masks on because they have to eat, uh, the spread could be a bit worse than it would be outdoors. That's why we have women. Let me finish. That's why we have outdoor dining, but we don't have indoor dining. And he's working on indoor dining with the possibility that, uh, uh, with indoor dining, with the possibility that uh, you could do it if you had. <laughs> Filter. Today he's uh, he's uh, what's your name today? Spider McKinney. Spider, Spider McKinney. Spider McKinney. Anyway, um, uh, that the the new the newest uh, thing is uh, a, a HEPA filter. That's a it's called God I forget the name of it. It's like a, I don't know a, a Mar, Mers three or something. I don't know what the name of it is. It was fifteen, and it can they think clear the air of covid mm-hmm. in an air in an air conditioner and purifier that recirculates the air and po- literally sucks it out he it said that's a possibility and they're looking into it and if a restaurant can afford to put that in that kind of filter into their into the air conditioner system and if their air conditioning system can take one of these filters because it's very thick uh, he said then maybe I'll let a, a, a restaurant open but right now, he doesn't feel comfortable about opening them. We've had a number of restaurants where they uh, close down the street and they uh, put uh, you know, a cover over the top. You know, I said we're, we're, we're the outdoor. And outside. Outdoor is okay. Yeah. But they're stopping that now. Well, oh, yeah. uh, your people are stopping that? We're not stopping that here in New York. They are stopping it. My here. wife and I have no desire to go out to eat. Yeah, yeah, not no with reason. this going on. Exactly. Right. I think, oh, that's uh, yes, uh, Howard? I went out for sushi last night. Really? Oh, what do you? Sensei? But he's safe in Hawaii. You go to Sensei? There was nobody there. It was like, uh, I think there was probably only maybe eight people in the restaurant. And wow. We were four of them. 
Is Sensei still open in Kihei? Sensei's gone. It's gone. Yeah. He said that. He said to prove to you that he's been to Hawaii and he's bragging about it, but he doesn't uh, brag. He just he just, he just he just throws out a name of like Sensei. That was my favorite sushi place. And it's because it's half off. He goes there when it's half off. Uh, I no, think. no, no, no. It's like karaoke. Uh, Same thing. Uh, half off. If he goes there, all, all, I'm, saying, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is that that it took a lot of guts for a guy like Cuomo to literally take what was a at the time a very unpopular stand about this, but he nipped it in the bud, and he took us from 800 deaths a day down to there were an average of eight now a day over a three-day rolling average. We had like a ten, we had an eight, we had a nine, and uh, to take it down, what ah. Uh, 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 what is that? Not a thousand percent. It's a percent. factor of a hundred. It's a factor of a hundred. That's a ninety-nine percent decrease. Ninety-nine percent decrease. Pretty amazing what he you did. You would think that uh, with fifty states and one yeah. that did such a good job, it would become a model. What, nobody states. ever mentions it. You know, yeah, you never because... hear. You never hear Pence get up and say, "You know what he said the other day? He had the nerve to say he said, well, you know, we, things are better. Look at what we did in New York.'" We? Yeah. <laughs> what we did in New York? You didn't fucking help at all. Everywhere? You know. I mean, well, did you hear what Pence's answer? Did you hear what Pence's answer for opening schools? What was Pence's answer? What? No, Pence, Pence was saying uh, on opening schools oh. that because Trump said the CDC regulations were too stren strenuous, that they're going to have the CDC revise the guidelines oh, so yeah. that they're not so strenuous. Trump's just oh. probably disappointed he can't pull away from the CDC the way he did from the WHO. Yeah. What Pence what Pence, Pence, Pence about. Well, oh, that won't day. happen until 2021 anyway, Rob. They cannot they can we can we can say we're going to leave the WHO, but we can't actually do it until 2021. Why is that? I don't know. I just heard that on the news. Well, it could that, be we're well, obligated. Good news because, it wouldn't uh, actually happen until like June of 2021. Well, that's good because by then maybe we'll have a cooler heads prevailing with different government and we, they won't pull out. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. You know, I was surprised to see Pence had a mask on today. They had them all lined up. Everybody had masks and yeah. he had picked the mask off. That's uh, the first Pence, time I've seen him with them. When Pence was talking about what he they did for new york they were talking about ppe they were talking about respirators no no, no. all he said was we brought the 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 uh, the, the rate down but they in did new york. new york no and, they didn't they had nothing to do with new york and that, he and, had to go to washington and beg to get the ship up here and to get help with the uh, with the uh, javits center uh and we never wound up having to use it by the way but outside of that, he didn't do anything. He, in fact, he pulled aid from all the states. Right. He did nothing. Uh, he did nothing. I'm telling you that thousands of respirators and millions of pieces. Yes, of they're people. going to Mexico. Well, now they are. They should be going to Arizona. In Texas. They're going there too. Any any uh, go governor that needs it and has asked for it has received it. Well, how come everybody's lining up to get tests in yeah, Arizona? Yeah. What about the thing? What about the thing that Trump said? And I know we're running out of time here. That Trump <laughs> said uh, that we have we're, we have so many tests, we're never going to run out of tests. Now you heard what FEMA said, right? FEMA says we're getting out of the testing business. Yeah. Who? <laughs> FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, says we're getting out of the testing business. We haven't even tested one tenth of the population yet, but we're done. And if you want to test in Texas, people. it takes you two weeks to get the results back, by which time you're sick. They've tested, as of the other day, one. 60 million people. Out of 340. And, and do you know how many of those tests? Do you know how many of those tests were in New York? Tests. Phil, we do 50,000 a day at least, minimum, here in New York. You want to talk about that large number? It's because of New York. How, how many people have actually uh, had to test? Well, I, had, I had a Monday. Yeah. I am sure I will be before my colonoscopy. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, I don't know what happened to Ray Renati, but Ray, I wish you had stuck around. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he tried to come back and I wasn't looking down here, but we got John Larkin on pretty fast. Say something, John, quickly. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. Uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, 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 yeah, a lot of people watching the show tonight. 
Really? Thank Amazing. You. you got a full house. And we got a full yeah. house, and the life's right. good, and <laughs> I'm feeling better, and oh, there she is again. I, I, I keep forgetting the, uh, 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 Adrian. Adrian? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I got it right. Hi, Alex. What are you looking so sour for, oh. Adrian? <laughs> she's going to die. Uh, Retire? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope uh, so. She's. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you all for joining us. Why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, and there we go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun one. Hmm. A lot of nice arguing and getting nasty and mean with each other. Anyway, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection, and he will be followed by absolutely nobody. But if he followed by me tomorrow night, I'll be here at uh, what time? Oh, yeah, 1030 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody, and uh, wear a mask, okay, and stay safe.